Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to follow up on Vaughn's talk and, and talk a bit about the, uh, the data ingestion pipeline. And one of the things that I want to stress is, is sort of how, you know, BioCaddy, you know, the working groups that Lucilla went through, the pilot projects, you know, the partners that we have, you know, in the repository landscape, how this is a very collaborative process in terms of sort of driving requirements and sort of building out uh, uh, the system it itself. Oops, do I just hit space on this? Does that work? Okay, there you go. Okay, so in terms of the, uh, uh, the prototype uh, architecture, as you've seen uh, before, uh, as, you know, when Ha when went through this, you know, one of the key areas is this ingestion uh, pipeline that takes information from uh, the repositories and online data sets. And again, uh, you know, uh, what was mentioned earlier uh, by Vivian is that, you know, also, you know, one of the key uh, aspects coming up is, is how do we actually, you know, integrate these pipelines with, you know, what's coming into uh, the commons itself. You know, we have, you know, we've, uh, there was a discussion of sort of the, uh, you know, the, the, the data sets that were, you know, critical uh, core data sets for the commons. Uh, those sort of resemble uh, standard repositories a, a bit, and I'll talk uh, uh, about some collaborations we have uh, with some other BBTK partners in terms of how this might, uh, how we might have ability to register uh, data sets within the commons uh, to BioCAD. So in terms of the landscape we're dealing with now, so uh, before, you know, PubMed was mentioned in relation to DATS. Uh, so if one looks at the PubMed model, one has, you know, one little uh, uh, icon on the bottom. Everything flows through what's called the journal article tag suite, and that flows into PubMed, right? So there's a very straightforward pipeline that's been, uh, been nailed down. What we're dealing with in BioCaddy in terms of bringing in this data is it's a much more varied landscape right now. There are no uh, standards that have been adopted community-wide, you know, for this data set metadata. That's something that, uh, you know, Susanna and her group are working on. But again, we're not at that point yet. So as uh, uh, Stefan mentioned earlier, you know, we were sort of talking about, you know, our two, you know, the, the various projects out there. And he's like, well, you know, you're trying to build a ship while you're sailing it. Right? So, you know, we have to get this off the ground. And, you know, this is the landscape that we currently, uh, you know, uh, exist in where, you know, data sets come from major repositories. They exist just out there, you know, on the web. Um, you know, some repositories do use common formats. Other have proprietary formats. And then you also have various aggregators. For example, OMXDI, which is uh, uh, also funded by BD2K, that provide sort of aggregation across some of these uh, uh, repositories that exist out there and might also attach additional metadata. And so what we have put together is an ingestion and indexing pipeline. So if you look sort of at the left and the bottom of this slide, you know, these are some of the various aspects of the process um, to deal with this. The first is the metadata transport, and this gets to what I was just discussing, in that we need to be able to get this information from you know, all these different uh, repositories, sources of information about data sets. Um, and so what we've done, we've built on top of uh, a scalable uh, metadata document store. So what we're using on the back end is MongoDB. So we have a very scalable cloud-based uh, implementation to maintain the metadata documents that are used uh, uh, within the system. And we've implemented a number of different transport mechanisms. So connecting to repositories, for example, such as PDB, which uses rsync, REST web service, which is, for example, Stefan's uh, links uh, project, you know, provides its information via, via web services. Dryad and other repositories use the Open Archives Initiative uh, protocol for metadata harvesting. So there are a number of sort of common connection types that we can build into the system, and over the last, you know, 18 months, we've been building those out as we have been connecting uh, more repositories. In terms of developments, in terms of the pipeline itself, uh, since the last time uh, we had this presentation, um, you know, there's been a lot in terms of improving some of the internals of the pipeline as well. And these are things that you don't actually see, you know, when you get an index document out of the, uh, out the end, but, you know, improvements in source configuration, improvements in how the pipeline operates, improvements in terms of how 
the system is actually able to uh, uh, send documents out uh, to be processed. And then, uh, you know, some key areas sort of in terms of this metadata uh, extraction are uh, with some of the external groups that have been mentioned before. So the first thing I wanted to mention, and this ties, you know, again to you know, the discussion we had earlier and the discussion we'll probably have then with uh, 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 Susanna later this afternoon is uh, interaction with schema.org. So one of the, the methods that could simplify the ability for uh, BioCaddy to actually get metadata about data sets from relevant resources is through appropriate markup, you know, at the repository, for example. Um, so as we discussed earlier, repositories aren't able to do that. That's something potentially that BioCaddy could, could do in terms of providing that type of markup. But repositories themselves could provide this type of markup that could then be uh, uh, extracted and brought into the pipeline. And so there's work uh, that's been going on between Elixir, uh, between BioCaddy, uh, uh, Susanna's group, and others, you know, looking at how we can extend uh, the biological data set portion of this, um, and this is work that is being coordinated through uh, bioschemas, and uh, I believe Susanna might be mentioning some of that a little bit later on. The other interaction that I thought was important to mention is that there are a lot of data sets that might exist out in the wild. So if, if a lab has a large data set that they've collected that, you know, might be then present on the commons, how does one actually register that with BioCaddy, right? It's not in a repository anywhere. And there might be some uh, specific metadata, uh, you know, that's relevant to that data set. And so what we've been doing, we've been working with uh, Mark Mewson's uh, Cedar Center at Stanford, and they're developing tools to basically create templates for uh, metadata uh, creation uh, within a user interface. So the screenshot's probably a little hard to see there, but this is sort of our template uh, BioCaddy uh, uh, user template uh, that we've been developing in their system. And so again, this is a, a very useful interaction for both groups because we're actually beta testing their site, you know, beta testing their templates and feeding them, uh, you know, user requirements as well as we develop this template uh, that we can then, you know, perhaps, you know, uh, you know, as people are registering data sets, we can then pull information from uh, Cedars uh, metadata store and ingest the biocaddy uh, as well. The core piece of the ingestion pipeline is then this metadata transformation. And so this is, you know, where sort of the user interface meets, you know, uh, the metadata model we've been, we've been talking about. And as part of the ingestion pipeline, we've developed uh, a transformation uh, processing language so that it makes it easy for us to take the information that we extract from various resources. So as we extract that information, it gets turned into JSON documents internally. So Mongo stores everything, you know, as JSON documents. So all the information we have about metadata from these repositories is in JSON format. We have this transformation language that we've implemented that allows us then to define transformation rules from, you know, various standards or from uh, repository specific information into, uh, you know, the model uh, of the index that we have, uh, that we then deploy. And, uh, you know, as was just uh, mentioned, you know, 2.1 specification actually was just published this week, and we've also just this week, um, you know, sent, uh, you know, Juan's group, you know, the first uh, 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 index documents in the 2.1 model. Uh, so that we can then interface, you know, uh, the new model uh, with the interface. Now, one of the key things to understand here is that this is a very sort of uh, 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 intricate dance that's being played by multiple uh, groups within BioCaddy because we're getting requirements from many different sides. So we're getting requirements from users, as, as Hua pointed out. Um, so we're getting a request in for certain features. Some of those features basically point to direct changes in the metadata model. So we're flowing through from the user requirements that we're getting as users are testing the system all the way back to the metadata model. We're also getting feedback from repositories. So the June workshop with repositories was mentioned. 
So there's also feedback from repositories as what they can provide, what they can't provide, what they'd actually like to see as part of, of data net that has to flow into the metadata model. Then there's a whole host of BioCaddy working groups. So all of this is flowing in and through this metadata model, which then has to get implemented. And so, you know, as we're going through these various iteration cycles, um, you know, there'll be development uh, at, you know, the metadata level. So as soon as, you know, with the, with the release of, you know, DAS uh, 2.0, one of the key things that we went through was a long process of reviewing the model, looking at the, 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 the dozens of repositories that we've already indexed, doing mappings, doing comparisons, feeding back to the metadata model, which has then now resulted in this 2.1 uh, release. So there's a, a lot of interaction between, you know, the various groups and, and making sure that, you know, we have a robust metadata model, you know, that then can be then represented in the documents that we produce. And so in terms of specifics, in terms of what we've actually implemented uh, in the pipeline is from all these different work groups. And Lucilla had mentioned, you know, all these work groups before, but I just wanted to highlight again saying that in terms of the identifiers recommendation, how we're actually representing identifiers in the index documents, um, you know, the DAPS model, you know, definitely, uh, the end user evaluation criteria, some of the feedback, you know, from the, from the users in terms of um, how they would like to facet sort information, the data site set citation metrics. This is where we're actually pulling, we've created a back-end uh, data store to maintain linkages between data sets and publications so that we can actually bring that information uh, into the index. The accessibility metadata that's part of DATS 2.1 that is part of, you know, the new metadata that's, you know, being rolled out, uh, you know, with, with, with the new version of the pipeline. And as I mentioned, the repository collaboration, which led, to, which was part of this June workshop. Now, in terms of you know, question that, that always comes up is you know, or always comes up around you know, various parts of scalability. So, as you noticed, I've touched upon this in, in, in various uh, parts of my slides. Um, in terms of the metadata ingestion piece of this, and this was mentioned earlier, PubMed is sort of the ultimate sort of target for where, you know, data set, uh, metadata specification and ingestion, you know, could end up, right? So we have then a formal specification that's adopted by all repositories that makes it easy for you know, data med, you know, to ingest, you know, its metadata because there is a common format across all those ways. Um, another way is uh, slightly more work is to base it on community standards for what these repositories are built around anyway. So there are a number of repositories, uh, for example, GEO, which uses, you know, standards, uh, you know, from the genomic community. And so we have a number of supporters for some of these standard uh, metadata formats. That would make, you know, the job easy as well. I mean, the question, though, is, you know, this top use case where there's repository-specific formats across the board. And that makes it um, very difficult to scale out very broadly because then you have to write converters for every single, um, uh, you know, repository or data set uh, uh, warehouse that exists. And so that's the question as, you know, as Lucilla mentioned earlier, as we talk about what happens next you know, with data med and the DDI, you know, what is required to, you know, make sure that this process um, uh, is uh, doable uh, down the road. Now, in terms of enhancement, so we get certain metadata elements from the repositories themselves. Um, the next step is that we actually do enhancement of the metadata, uh, you know, within the pipeline uh, itself. And so, one was mentioned by Hua's group where they have an NLP pipeline uh, that they've done, which also does you know, entity recognition. And so this is integrated with a pipeline as an enhancement module. So each of the <coughs> steps along the way in dealing with the document in the pipeline is a module that can be run sort of in sort of a, a sequence. So we can have, you know, what you might consider a workflow built around document processing where we can define, you know, what these steps and enhancements are. And so currently, 
there are a number of enhancements uh, you know, that, that, that were implemented, that's NLP and the data citation module, um, so that we can actually pull that information into a metadata record that didn't exist originally within that record. Um, and so this is now implemented in the current uh, 2.1 pipeline. And once we've gone through, you know, all these steps of processing, um, we then have to sort of extract out of the document what is sort of the portion to be sent to the index itself. And so one key thing that we do is that we maintain both the original metadata and the sort of new DATS version of the metadata within the same document. So we have full provenance of how a document was converted from the original metadata to, um, you know, the final index metadata. And this is all maintained within the metadata document store based on MongoDB. So the MongoDB is really sort of our uh, way to sort of manage doc metadata documents, to do the processing, and to keep track of what was done to all of those uh, documents. Um, in terms of this new pipeline that includes all the uh, um, enhancements. Um, currently, uh, on a very sort of lightweight processing node, uh, we're processing about 20,000 documents an hour. Um, and so that's only on one node. And so we actually, you know, in, in test, you know, we scale out to, uh, you know, uh, we've tested up to eight nodes. You know, the scale up is pretty linear because this is based on a, message passing architecture. So as soon as a new node comes in, it says, okay, well, you know, are there any documents I can process? And if there are, you know, it picks them up, picks up the next batch, does the processing. So we can scale this up uh, fairly easily, you know, just by adding new nodes to the processing pipeline. Um, the other important uh, uh, piece to note is that we're talking about updates earlier. And so if we actually bring in a document that hasn't changed, we actually note that earlier on. And so basically that document won't get processed again um, unless the pipeline has changed. So, you know, if we have a fixed pipeline, we bring in a new document, we can actually tell that it's the same document. And then, you know, basically say, okay, well, we don't need to spend any time on this because, you know, we've done it already. So there are a number of other areas where we also uh, sort of deal with uh, a change comparison, you know, to deal with, uh, you know, how do, how do we deal with uh, evolving resources. And then finally, when uh, the uh, uh, document is generated, we then export this to uh, Elasticsearch and, uh, you know, as mentioned by Juan earlier, and for us on the indexing side, the important part are the sort of scalable cloud uh, components of Elasticsearch that make it very easy to sort of scale up both for searching and for indexing. So it makes it very easy to have sort of an online uh, index that one can update, you know, one can add, you know, new indices. So how we structure our indices on the back end, we're able to easily add new data sources, um, you know, to the overall index, you know, as they come online and we're also easily able to update them, uh, you know, sort of as they exist on the, uh, on the service itself. There are native JSON APIs for developers that would target directly the metadata. Um, and what Hua mentioned in his slide is that that doesn't include a lot of the sort of user interface workflow in terms of doing some of the query expansions and other things that they're doing on the user interface that one might also want to see in services. So we actually envision there's sort of two sort of layers of services. There's sort of a, a, a raw API, you know, which is index, you know, uh, access directly to the index data. And then there's sort of a more uh, user targeted API, a uh, higher level API, uh, where uh, groups can develop applications based on the functionality of data med, but through the services uh, themselves. And that was sort of the sort of quick overview of the data ingestion pipeline. Uh, so if there are any other questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them.